Day Watchers, welcome back to Perth Watch, your horology channel broadcasting from right here in Perth, Western Australia. Today I have a piece courtesy of Nerman Watches. Thank you for making this watch available. Uh, this is a new brand and that is obviously Japanese kanji. Hitori is this new brand and this is their inaugural piece that I'm going to feature today. Nice, um, you know, kind of this very uh, subtle coloring on this box here, uh, which is the outer box. Spinability is pretty darn good, at least a four out of five for this today. Let's open this up and, you know, immediately you have the operating instructions uh, and the warranty on the same card as well. Just let you guys scan that. Most of the time I don't even really look at that because, and most of you probably don't actually, for a three-handed date uh, as you find in a watch like this. Okay, let's get the inner box out and this is kind of nice faux leather embossed uh, hitori there. Nothing else on the bottom there, so plain faux leather uh, and pleasingly on the inside is actually real wood grain, which is a, a callback to uh, vintage Japanese watches as I understand it. You know, cases came like this and this is felt uh, in here which is surrounding the watch inside in a really quite lovely uh, packaging here, even though it's, you know, relatively simple. Uh, spare links I've put aside on the inside there. All right, let's put that aside and show you guys this watch in closer detail. So this is the Hitori Ryukyu Diver in retro black. Uh, the listed price is 388 USD. Uh, I know Nomad Watches does sometimes give coupons and sometimes they go on sale. So expect that, you know, occasionally you will be able to find this cheaper from Nomad Watches themselves. I'm not sure where uh, else this might sell. So far, it doesn't appear to be selling anywhere else that I could do on a quick Google search. Now, this does come in a couple of other blue color variations as well. Check out the website for uh, the coral and ocean blue versions if you wish. All right, as usual, first up, I'm gonna go into the movement. Now, this is none other than the NH35A. Details down the left of screen here, not gonna go through it. Uh, now, in this case, the quick set date is implemented at the three o'clock position, a uh, typical white uh, disc with black writing. And I think this is fine because it offsets the uh, marker on the opposite side. So they haven't changed it out to color matching or anything like that. In terms of accuracy, uh, this is running about plus five seconds per day in the last week that I've kept it running, which is very good. You know, I absolutely can live with plus five a day. I don't feel compelled to regulate it any more accurately. Moving on to the case then. So uh, in, in this watch, uh, it's going to be difficult for me to show you, but the case actually is slight, ever so slightly wider, particularly around the crown. I think it's slightly asymmetric. It pops up a little bit. So the case is 40.8 millimeters. The bezel is a little bit less than that at around 40 millimeters. So 40.0 millimeters by calipers is the actual bezel. So slightly in from the case. Uh, overall thickness to the top of the glass from the bottom of the case is 13.6 millimeters, uh, which is reasonable for a capable dive watch, in my opinion. Uh, the lugs are 20 millimeter width and they are drilled, which is a nice touch. Uh, lug to lug distance between my thumbs is 47.5 millimeters. And the overall weight with the few links removed is 156 grams, which is middling. You know, it's actually a comfortable weight. It sits firmly on the wrist and you won't, you know, I don't forget uh, watch that weight on my wrist, but it also is a fairly comfortable, substantial weight. Right, finishing. So most of the bezel finish is polished, but of course, uh, you know, you've got that grip there, which uh, kind of breaks up the polish here. Circular brushing on the top and horizontal brushing on the side which is very sharply done, I have to say, that the finishing on this case is really quite good and as good as Seiko, any Seiko at this price, in my opinion, perhaps a bit better than that. You know, very sharp finishing with that, that, that bevel at 45 degree at polish and then mirror polish at the bottom. You see that, that bottom bevel curve there onto the bottom surface of the lugs, very nicely done mirror polish there. And that also applies to the ends of the lug, you know, in that little surface there. 
All right, so that, that's really quite nice polishing uh, on the case uh, here. And then you've got that etched great wave in the middle of the case back there with some details in a very cool retro type of font. You know, I think that's deliberately done in a vintage style. So you've got a screw down solid case back, uh, a screw down sign crown for this dive watch with, uh, you know, again, a bit of a hitori, the he, I think, of the hitori on the top here. So the, the water rating here is a 200 meter and it does feel like a diver's 200 meter, even though it probably isn't full ISO 6425, it does feel like it is capable uh, of withstanding all the tests. Okay, moving on to the dial now. So over here is really a satin, I'm gonna call it satin uh, black with some very subtle texture here. It's got printed details with the Hitori, uh, the automatic, the 200 meter water rating, which is which again is also done nicely in that you know charming kanji uh, lettering for the water rating here. It's got applied indices all the way around, and these indices are you know do appear to float above the back. They are applied quite highly uh, above the dial, or at least they stick up uh, quite high above the dial here, which is a nice three dimensional effect. It's got brushed and polished, so jewel finish rectangle hands here and a rectangle loom mark on the second hand to, you know, kind of carry on that rectangle theme. BGW9 loom is applied here, and that includes the full bezel as well. Loom shot right here, of course, to show you guys how it looks like in the dark. Right, surrounding the dial is a unidirectional 120 click dive style bezel. It's got a ceramic insert, full loom ceramic, and they tell me this is a full 2.7 millimeter, which is very substantial. A lot of ceramic inserts will be nowhere near as thick as that. I'm not even sure if Omega Guess uh, gives something as thick as that. Let's listen to it now. Five. So soft, buttery smooth, I have to say, and minimal back play, right? Very buttery smooth, almost a little bit too loose, but you know, it is what it is, uh, but it feels you know, fairly nicely fitted, I have to say, this, this uh, dive bezel here. Uh, the sapphire crystal on top of the dial is domed, lightly domed, not too heavy, you haven't gone nuts with that. Uh, but you know, I'm, I'm glad they put a little bit of a dome there, always prefer dome over flat myself. Okay, moving on to the bracelet. So this is a three-piece Belink uh, bracelet, you know, it's brush steel here, polished sides here, solid endlings that you're going to see there and pleasingly they've given uh hopefully you can see that screw link adjustment right so nicely done actually the, the screws feel pretty nice as well nicely engineered and fitted you know not not loose like perhaps pagani might be uh, the bracelet does taper to 16 millimeters and this clasp is an 18 millimeter wide clasp fairly simple unfortunately brushed here uh feels like I guess a Chinese OEM class with a three point micro adjust is what this feels like. Right, okay, so that's the entire description. Let's just snap the watch on my wrist for a wrist shot for you guys now. And there you have it, the Hitori Ryuku Diver in retro black on my 17 centimeter wrist. This classic 40 millimeter bezel sizing, uh, I, I think fits most guys you know that I have seen. Uh, for the 47.5 millimeter, um, you know, lug to lug distance, it also fits okay, despite the fact that it has male rather than female end links there. And remember the thickness is 13.5 millimeters. And that's how it looks like with that bracelet. Probably, I guess the least desirable part of the watch is at the bottom here. The top is really quite top notch. Okay, so that's the description. What have I enjoyed about this watch? What do I like about it? Well, look, I think it is a very well executed, you know, loosely inspired by the 62 mass uh, piece, right? Diver watch. And it's got its own character and it hasn't really copied it all out. Uh, really, it's done its own bezel dimension, definitely done its own markers. Uh, those indices are quite different to anything uh, else that I've seen. It's not direct copy of the 62 mass. Uh, and it's got great details, you know, the mirror bevels, you know, I've kind of talked about that, the mirror polish on the bottom of the case back here, uh, the jewel finish, you know, brush and polish on the hands, the main hands, uh, the trapezoidal loom, right? So just, uh, I guess, 
focusing on the face here again, it's got rectangle for the 6, 9, and 12. But if you look at carefully at in-between markers like the 4 and the 5, it's actually more a trapezoid rather than uh, a full rectangle. So nice little kind of little details that they've thought about here. Uh, I like how the markers are really quite high above the dial here. They, they look like they float above the black to me. And the charming kanji lettering, you know, I, you know, some people might think that's a little bit tacky, but I like how they've done it. You know, the Japanese lettering on the dial there, that does make people look at it and, and you know, ask with interest, oh, what is this watch? That looks interesting. Overall, I think this is a quality package, right? You're getting the Seiko movement, you're getting a nice dome sapphire, you're getting a very thick ceramic uh, insert on the bezel, full 200 meter uh, dive rating, which you know does again feel like it can withstand ISO testing and drill lux along with screw adjustment on the bracelet. So a lot of you know uh, quality inclusions in this particular watch. However, you know, is it absolutely perfect? Well, no, I don't think so. I would say the bezel alignment is not absolutely perfect. In, in fact, it's actually slightly misaligned here. But hey, a lot of Seiko, even up to $1,000, would give you misaligned uh, bezels. I think the fit, finish, and excellent, uh, you know, in terms of engineering is great at the top here and continues on to the first part of the bezel, but it seems to terminate before the rather average class, which really just looks like an OEM Chinese factory class. I think that would be a very easy lift for them if they get the bezel alignment light and give us, uh, I guess, a more solid original class. This would really knock this out of the park. So there you go, my thoughts on this particular piece. Let's flip it around now for the wrap up. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that quick fire review. Let me know your thoughts and comments below. Always look forward to the discussion from my viewers. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me. And as always, I'll catch you guys again next time.